of love and welcome to the reflection show with me martha Spice. today we want to look at how we can help ourselves to build healthy marriages we have looked at what love means to a man we've looked at what love means to a woman we've looked at the impact of of social media on relationships i want to see how we can sustain our marriages or our relationships in this month because the rate of breakups and divorces are so high but i believe that with the word of god and leveraging on even our own wisdom and our own knowledge and not forgetting the god factor can really help us a lot let's take a break when we come back we delve into a conversation on how to build healthy marriages stay tuned back from the break we'll be looking at building healthy marriages and making sure that all of us stay in our marriages all of us are not breaking up our relationships with any petty petty issues and crowds here and there i have here my couple crash mr and mrs several in my studio today helping us to see how we can all stay in our marriages they've been married for eight years right yeah correct wow eight years hey it's it's uh, i cut two years nobody ten <laughs> how did you meet hmm. yeah. I, 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 yeah. ladies <laughs> ladies first how did you meet i think we met in school we met in the university which school i want to mention the name of the school university of the best the best university ah, yes. if i didn't go there i'll ask you to mention <laughs> <laughs> ucc oh, okay but, hmm. so we we were course mates mm. um program mates actually so we're in the same class so what happened was it was a friend of mine who actually spotted him mm. we the first lecture we attended you know ucc the lecturer gave us an assignment oh, plenty once yes so we did the research and then we got our assignment papers back so we're in a shuttle from one lecture to another okay and then i think the lecturer had told us to form groups okay that he would give us group assignments mm. and so um, we had come from the same SHS. I think we're three ladies. Mm -hmm. mm. Myself, Phyllis and Edith. Yeah. Mm. And I think Becky, four. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted guys to just add up. But we wanted clever guys. Okay. So the, um, the friend spotted him with his paper. Mm. I think he got eight over ten or nine mm. the assignment was very good some of us had five over ten and <laughs> the girls girls and then the we shock. saw that he was reading his assignment the ladies were saying see this guy he got eight over we'll add him to the group so that lady is a little bit you know yeah so immediately we got off the shuttle the lady approached him mm. and then spoke to him that he wanted him to join the, the group, here group and there. Yeah. So the lady was even closer to him okay. than the rest of us. Okay. So he came to join the group. I think that's where we met. Hey. Uh, it was just just casual hey. group. I think he, he didn't even notice me in the group. Okay. You didn't notice her in the group. No. I'm not sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> but like I know oh there's a, a team member. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're a team member. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So at, at what point did it they didn't grow beyond cosmate and I think that. that should be um, level 200. Mm. Yeah, that should be level 200. When um, um, we started having more uh, group discussions, mm. I think after the first year was more of knowing each other. Okay. Yes, and even within that level 100, like I said, it was, she said the friend was the one I was quite close, close to, to or okay. talked to more. I barely spoke with her. It was, mm. yeah. everything was just for my group, and that was it. God uh, was preparing both of We didn't speak after. And he was <laughs> the one who was mostly teaching us. Okay. When we go for the group, he's the teacher Shark. amongst yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, he will explain for us to <laughs> all understand <laughs> those <laughs> of us. <laughs> so, second year, that is when I. I remember this scenario where I, after one discussion, the guys was like, okay, we want to go and see the ladies visit their hostel. And I think they were in a hostel together. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so I went there and from, I, I don't know, I think we're two guys. And then I, I ate from her pot. Mm. You know, I went to Parasite. Mm. It was either Gobe or mm. Banku and Uku. Mm. I, 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 one yeah. of them. Yeah, it was one of them. Mm. And I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what they say. They, uh, they wait to say, Man's heart is true, <laughs> but I don't know if that's what happened. Star Rice, teach us the I way, show us the way. But I think after eating the food, I felt I don't know. I just thought that oh, this person, um, it, it didn't have anything to do with love or anything, mm -hmm. but it's like I, I just got to notice her, to notice her, mm -hmm. and maybe like her. You know, like oh, it's a, the way she has sorted me, she's <laughs> a good person. You understand? Marriage, but, but not, yeah. not love okay. or marriage. But okay. you know, just that emotion of liking somebody. Mm. That is when that thing actually. Okay. Uh -huh. That was in level two hundred. That was in level two hundred. Okay, so how yeah. long were you friends for before you started? I've been friends for like two years. Okay. Yes, because I proposed to her in final year. Okay. Yeah, but we're friends, close friends, and even throughout all those times, she was, she was assisting me she was like a christian sister like i ah, said and christian sister. we we're praying together at a point level 300 and all but it, there was nothing like marriage in okay. the picture uh-huh and for her i didn't want to lose that at that point because she was helping me a lot in terms of you know the kitchen <laughs> like i was eating from her pot so i didn't want <laughs> I to parasite. so i didn't want to propose and she would say no and you lose everything at all it didn't come to my my interest at that point look i i i'd say that she was god sent mm. to me because the university was very tough for me wow um i remember level 200 one of the evenings i called her i was crying oh. i had gary and i wanted sugar to mix with it oh. to eat and sleep that night i didn't have it and you know i cried and then i called her i remember then she would get a stew Charlie. She was an angel. Charlie. To me in the investment. Your dad this money that you <laughs> call <to> send me. <laughs> she, was an, and she was just helping me. Yes. You know, yes just like yes. some poor boy. And mm. then she just Honestly, me. yeah. Are you sure you were just helping? Or you saw a vision? Not at all. Way. Amazingly. Okay. Not yeah. at all. You were not sowing a seed. Not at all. Oh. He wasn't even part of one of those I was hey. considering. Hey. He was just like a Christian brother or um a brother in me okay actually mm. that was how it looked like wow. because he was always following me i remember one time you even came to my hostel yeah i think I you know that he was just pissing me off oh yeah. because at a point i was just You're like almost he's begging for time, the sugar too much almost every time this guy is just around <laughs> the corner he came he that knocked she uh, i heard it i didn't mind him <laughs> <laughs> I knocked on the door. Uh, she was in. She was, I was in. inside. Oh. And then I, and I saw him. Mm. You see your life today. You are <laughs> 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 so, at what point did you feel like you said you proposed to her in final yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. At what point did you feel that probably she was the one? Uh, I mean, um, when you when you be with somebody for a while and you've known each other, uh, there's a point where you would know whether there's some attraction or not. Mm. Okay. Like I said, marriage and love wasn't my, my mm. issue at the university was how to survive. How to get food to eat. How so to you pack just saw your supermarket. And <laughs> <laughs> so you just wanted to, to take you get it. Okay. And of course I was I was a student minister or leader okay. in church. Mm. So my focus was more on church mm. and all those things. So uh, with time I realized she was she was a Christian lady. She was singing on campus mm. and Myself, I was a church leader as well, mm. uh, one of the campus ministries. So I was only one of them, and then we were, we were vibing along, praying together in the gardens mm. and all of that. But then um, there was a point, a lady, one of the choir, the choir leaders, mm. you know, that I was looking at because then we were all, you know, number nine people. So I thought about her, but I couldn't. Mm. you know go for it like that because as a minister of the gospel you have to do your things right yeah so i kept studying praying and then i think one night i had a dream about the lady and then i saw the lady and then a, a, a voice told me in the dream that show me something in the person mm. transparent show me mm. something in the person that i can't live with yeah so i have to call it off mm. she wasn't someone for me so mm. i dropped it mm. so uh with time um the the love grew you mm. know you realize that the bonding was there mm. the fellowship was there and so i was on vacation i think level 300 then 
I was listening to a man of God preach, and then I heard a voice mention my wife's name and said, She's your wife. Wow, don't let oh you know, god, let me hear you know. this kind of voice. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but I see it, it didn't just happen like that because we had become very close yeah. friends at yeah. that time. She was my best friend, I didn't oh, have really? any friend, yes. She was, she was, I didn't have a male friend that I can call body Best body. Friend. I had yeah. prayer, prayer people yes. that were praying together, sharing the word of God together. Didn't have a friend. But not a body body like her. She was closest to me. Wow. Uh-huh. You know. But the so, other people in your, like your friend circle think you were already dating even before you started dating. Did people think you guys were already going Oh, out? yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh okay. Yes. Uh, maybe, yes, yes, yes. Well, maybe they, they, they Even they in class. Okay. At the point where we're going for lectures together, we we'll yeah. sort of meet yeah. up. Yeah. We're studying together. So wow. when we have a lecture, we we'll move from the library, we we'll work together. So people thought... I mean, I had to many times school people that no, because that time I didn't. It was just, you know. And your mind was not even my on My mind him. wasn't there. Yeah. And myself, I had my own principles. Okay. So when I started, relationship was one of the last ones I okay. said in my final year. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's necessary. Yes. So I said in my final, I wanted to see my GPA top. <laughs> I wanted to. If you got to this one, uh -huh. uh, before I I now. You know pay that. attention to yeah. those ones mm. uh -huh. so what, what was about him that he wasn't part of the list and Is it because he was asking for your gary too much and you were still <laughs> or what not necessarily but it, it wasn't my spec mm. one <laughs> um, i felt he looked so much like my brother okay which of them i remember um when we even started dating most people asked whether he was my, my brother. brother yeah okay. because it, we looked alike mm -hmm. i think those times yeah, yeah those times your look, face was very skinny looking <laughs> at you now i'm seeing some uh, yeah so he looked more like my brother mm. and i didn't want yeah. my brother I, I get it that kind of uh-huh so he i wasn't even looking at him there were so many other people around you know Mm. in 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 I, the I denominations that i, I was and uh -huh. so i remember when he started coming around those people were you know they didn't uh, really like so him. they saw it in their spirit that <laughs> this young man was coming they didn't through. really like him uh -huh. so when he proposed to you did you is it something that you suspected before okay. he said it so um he's very sensitive mm. i mean spiritually sensitive and so I always tell him that if he had proposed earlier, mm -hmm. he would have lost me. Mm -hmm. Because initially, of course, it wasn't there. Yeah. And you know, as ladies, if mm -hmm. it's not there, it's, it's not, not there. there yeah. And me, if it's not there, you come. The friendship cry, it won't yes. continue. He would have lost the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So he was very sensitive, sensitive. to the point that when we even started getting very close, mm. um, at a point he knew, I mean, it, the connection was coming, but mm -hmm. still... He didn't mm -hmm. because um, at a point when I started also feeling something, sometimes I'll just rebuke it. But um, eventually, as I kept praying, you know, I had started praying about my spouse. I think way back in SS or something, wow. they taught us, yeah, you know, pray. in church one of the times. And then so I had started praying about my spouse. So um, it was one of my prayer topics. So eventually, as I kept praying, as I kept, you know, um, engaging with him it, it just happened yeah. naturally so yeah. when he proposed it wasn't a difficult thing mm. at that point i just knew he was the one so did you say yes there oh, yes, then there hey! <laughs> uh -huh, I, I felt you know when <laughs> it's amazing. so if you didn't do i'll think about it no 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 he proposed after we had finished praying okay. that's why i say he's very sensitive we we had a prayer yeah, yeah, yeah we we it. met up to pray mm. and then after we had finished we had said amen mm -hmm. then he said it wow what do you have to say wow <laughs> i just said yes because before then you were also sensitive yes, and you I, felt I, that I, I, I just one of these days he would say i wow. just knew that it was it wow yeah. wow were you afraid a bit to propose or at that time you have eaten the food now so even if you miss it <laughs> but at that point what what i uh, asked you were praying yeah. i i want us to delve more a bit where there are times that we are even confused one how did you pray most of us say that oh we are praying for our spouse and god is not answering if you can just share some of your personal strategies of how you prayed and she mentioned you are very sensitive how do you become sensitive to the will of god and the ways of god for your spouse okay okay 
Okay, so sensitivity to the will of God and the ways of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, of what it comes with practice. It doesn't just happen. Uh huh. Um, whatever you you put in your um, relationship is what happens in your closet between you and God. Okay. So if you don't have it there, it can't happen in your relationship. Mm. So if you are not close to God in prayer, uh, it can't manifest that way. Mm. Uh huh. So uh, it's more of what we do daily mm. that translates. You just apply it. You know, the truth is universal. The application that varies. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, um, of course, we're praying about it every day. I engage in prayer every day about it. And then I, I watch. Okay. I watch. I look out for signs. Uh-huh. Of course, I, I didn't do what Gideon did by asking for a sign from mm. the angel. <laughs> yes. But I looked out for signs. There are things that would, especially where I said that there was somebody I was looking at. Uh, even though I wasn't close to her, but I, I, I saw that there was something in her that wouldn't work. So I had to look, physically look that, oh, this person, you know, because looking at her, she was somebody that had order. She was, um, she had procedures of doing things. She had standards and things like that. And look, I was, I was rough. I was just raw material like that, you know, in there. Uh huh. I didn't know how to do quite time. I just anytime I just do my prayer. Okay. You get it. I don't know how to lay my bed. Mm. You know, all those things. It's I, I actually start hard to do it because of her. Because wow. when I go to I see everything is orderly done, you know. Uh huh. So whilst you are praying, I'm watching like, oh, this person, I can learn a lot from her. Mm. I think she didn't know I was learning from her, but yeah. I was because where I come from is not organized. Mm. You understand? Uh huh. buga buga, everybody surviving mm-hmm. in the place. <laughs> You get it. But you meet somebody who is very organized and they're like, okay, you can learn a lot. Like Maba civilization. Mm. It was like my civilization. <laughs> you, you get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so whilst I'm praying, I'm watching. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the, the voice of God didn't vary from what I physically saw. Okay. My attraction. Mm. And then my my logic in mm. terms of understanding who the person I'm going to mm. to, to, to love. Yeah. So everything was in sync. Mm. Uh-huh. So in school you were friends for two years. Yes. Then you proposed to her. How long did you date? And when you proposed, did you know you were going to marry her, or you proposed and said, "Let's see how it goes." No, of course I knew I was going to marry her. Wow. Uh-huh. It wasn't like, of course, there are times where you know that things things are not working. Yeah. It, you know Challenging. those yeah. those moments. These are realities of life. Mm-hmm. There are times where reality is setting. It's not love. Yeah. It's reality. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And those are the points where the emotions disappear. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. But the word of God is the word of God. Hey, the emotions uh-huh. disappear. I'm, I'm, yes. I've been hearing that a lot these yes. days. Uh, the, interviews the butterfly in the body. Hey, the, I was about to say, I've had <laughs> butterflies. Uh, you will now be feeling anger. So men also f- have feel butterflies. Yes, of course. I mean, what I makes you like great. somebody? Okay. There's some, you know, I said the food aspect for mine, <laughs> you know, it was made me like the person. Okay. But of course, at a point, it's developed to something. Mm. you know uh-huh so mm. those are the things and she's very caring that wow. one uh, yes. she's very caring so whilst i was praying she you know for her she was helping somebody but i i saw somebody who watch really cared it, about me pray. yes so it's not just about praying and then you know in vacuum no we are praying but you are watching you're observing you're observing things that you know that because mm. you see you marry for purpose mm-hmm. and not for love mm-hmm. Aha, uh-huh. you marry for purpose and not for love because the love usually at that stage you are looking at emotions because okay. you don't really understand a lot about the love thing so but when you marry for purpose like in genesis 2 verse 24 about mm-hmm. you know a, a, a helper for you you are looking at something you want to do mm. i saw that this person carrying if i get somebody who is basa like me yeah uh uh-huh, <laughs> you know will be basa yeah uh-huh but still now because she's still trying to put me in order <laughs> Yeah. i'm still working for <laughs> you know uh-huh so um i needed that that person mm. in my life mm. uh-huh. she wasn't going to fix me mm. she's not going to fix me but she's a compliment so she's she understood help. your weaknesses she understood your your let me yeah keyword weaknesses and she, probably she was ready to live with it yeah yeah wow yeah. when he said yes did you know he was the one yes mm. i mean yes means yes and he didn't propose like i love you mm. he said he wanted to marry me mm. 
at the point of proposal okay. so yes meant yes wow. i mean as at, at that point we we had shared so much together that i knew him like i know i know myself mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. he had told me like in so in, much in so him. much about him so i knew what i was you know getting mm -hmm. into and i was sure you know in a place of prayer mm -hmm. in in a place of peace mm -hmm. That I mean, he was the one. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing. I mean, as he said, though there were times where the flesh would communicate something else. Mm -hmm. The butterflies are not there, especially when we completed school. Mm -hmm. We go out in the world, and there are other options. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I remember I had some, I had some oil and gas guy. Hey, See, that guy nearly caused confusion between us. <laughs> some nice oil and gas guy, oh. Charlie. He nearly caused confusion, but I mean, were you confused? Yes, I was. Whether it's oil and gas or yes, oil and gas was or, the flesh. Or, or prayer and anointing. <laughs> oil and gas was the flesh. I okay. mean, the flesh aspect. You are looking at the future, the moment. This guy cry. What does he have? Now his family background. This job. oil and gas. His father too is in oil and gas. Hey. I mean, you are securing your future. But I mean, anytime you go into the place of prayer, this is the same person that keeps coming. Mm. I mean. So how did God approve? Like, uh, is it that God just just uh, come like that? You always say, well, an angel will just come and stand in front of you, Jim, and say, "Oh, my daughter, this is the one." Or how how did you get your approval? Okay, you mentioned the peace, but just maybe one or two highlights. So as 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 he said, um, some of these things are personal. It depends on your relationship mm. with God. I mean, someone said it is not in your relationship that. Will be the first time god will speak god mm -hmm. should have already been speaking mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. before you can make a decision mm -hmm. in every aspect of your life and so personally and um, peace works for me mm -hmm. peace works for me and um sometimes by his word sometimes by scripture mm -hmm. and so anytime i pray about something and i get absolute peace mm -hmm. i know that it's a, that that's the thing okay. so that is actually what's worked for me in his mm. case and i think both of you are sensitive and you know how god speaks to you even in other issues so probably when god just confirmed that it was much easier for you it was easier let's take a break we'll be right back growing up it was so difficult finding answers to all the questions that bothered my young mind as soon as I found my purpose and understood my mandate, I made it a mission to answer as many questions as possible, bothering young people. I have mentored, inspired, and helped young people unearth their potentials through the Martha Rintwise Foundation. However, I feel it is time to bring the conversation much closer to you. We have you in mind, you the young person. With my team of experts, we bring to you The Reflection Show. A show that focuses on addressing issues young people face, helping them to unearth their potentials, and giving them nothing but the best avenues in helping them solve issues that they may face in their young age. Join me, Martha Inspires, every Thursday and Saturday at 8.30 p.m. on Truth TV. The Reflection Show, Restoring Hopes. Welcome back from the break. We are still looking at building healthy marriages, making sure that we are still in tune with the will of God and the ways of God. I'm still speaking with Mr. and Mrs. Sebo, who are helping us to understand how um, they started this journey of marriage in eight years now, almost a decade. Hey, I, I, I pray I'll, I'll be there to, to, to see your 10th anniversary. Now, we see a lot of um, young people. I believe eight years has really been a long time. And then um, still with the word of God, with the will of God, how do you think you have, what has helped you to build your marriage? The head of the, the foundation of the, the head of the house. Let me start with you. you pushed it to me. <laughs> uh, what has helped us to build? Yes. Um, of course, um, everything comes down to love. Mm. 
Yes, everything comes down to love. The foundation of uh, marriage is love. Love is a universal uh, factor. Mm. Like I said earlier, it's the application that varies. Mm. So the, the the foundation of every marriage should be love. Mm. And how it applies in each marriage varies. Mm. Mm. So in our case, of course, we had to apply the word of God. Mm. And in the application, what we were doing had to do with love. Mm. Mm. So the word of God helped us to dispense the love in our hearts. Mm. Uh -huh. So uh, it's not anything different from the word of God. Okay. But uh, narrowing it down to a personal experience, mm. um, how it helped had to do it, making it practical. Okay. Uh, I've always said that um the the scriptures have to be practicalized mm. and not lived in a vacuum or just spoken mm. uh, one of the things uh, that a preacher has to be careful about is not to preach the word and then leave something else mm. so it's easier to preach about it and it's hard work to live it mm. so i've always been telling my wife like look this is what the word of god says yeah it doesn't matter how we are feeling at the moment mm. but this is what it says and it's practical so mm -hmm. let's practicalize it mm -hmm. let's live it it's not easy wow but that's the way if, if not then we are hypocrites mm -hmm. you yeah see? yes yeah. it's 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 work and it has to be worked out mm. if not the bible will not be written for our instruction yeah you know so one preacher said that if we are all going to be christians mm. there will be no need for marital counseling okay wow if we are all going to be christians yes. there will be no need for counseling yes. before you get married mm, that's or even deep. in marriage okay. where an external person has to come mm. in and solve problems mm. it's it's the bible it's love mm -hmm. the scriptures are there when we read first corinthians chapter 13 almost that whole chapter is talking about love wow so it's for our living we are looking at the example of mm. christ mm. we are talking about forgiveness this is what the bible talks about forgiveness mm. This is what they ask for offense. Bible says offense is inevitable. So even in marriage, it's more. It's not like even in marriage. It's, it's more. Hey, Trust me. Offense no, is more in marriage. It's more in marriage because you see, how many times if you are dating somebody, mm. how many times do you meet? If you are angry or you feel like getting angry, you can go to your house. Yeah. And three days decide not to pick the person's it's call. <laughs> and we're going to see them. You you wear your best dress yes. your best shoe your best yes. makeup make sure you're in the mood yes. to talk then you call the person yeah whether you're in the mood or not the person is sitting by you in your space in your, in face. your space in your face <laughs> hey you don't want to see the face you understand <laughs> yeah but you're seeing the face you can't drag the person out of the house i know right so that is when that that love of god that word of god it has to has come to be there. otherwise people will kill you <laughs> no you see eh? The offense is enough. I want. I want to be very practical. Yeah, yes, yes, I like that. Yeah, Eish. The, the word of God is practical. Mm -hmm. You see, I've always said that. Have you ever been so angry? Yes. That you'd be like, so I, I, I sure I really married this woman. Of course. Ooh. No, you see, you are human. The Bible is for our profiting. The mm -hmm. word of God is for our profiting. If not, if that offense is not there, the Bible will not talk about forgiveness. That's true. So you have to forgive you before you get married. Yes. Forgive all the forgiveness oh, yes. in advance. Wow. If 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 it's not there, if the book of Ephesians, I think chapter four, it will not be talking about husbands loving Love wives, your wives, wives respecting Certain, husbands yeah. because he knows that look, the man will do something and put you off, mm. and you feel like ah, which which I don't use it. Which, which, who did I marry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I remember someone told me that that. Uh, even a week after his wedding he was like am, am i sure i, I really heard from god yes. and it was like you are lying that's the one that's the correct that's one okay. wow so you would have to practice it's hard work mm. you have to practicalize it you may not like it mm. but you have to do it against your emotions wow Ag mm. against your your selfish mm. th that thing is selfish mm. because somebody does something to you and for mm. me i've said that look i can't have my spiritual sanity mm -hmm. to pray when i have God grudge with, with my wife, wife and i've not settled it wow it's a lie mm. 
Mm. Like, at least go and apologize. Mm. It's all the word of God. But we are told that most of the times the men expect the woman to apologize more. If the woman doesn't do it, you keep that thing in your heart and mm. you can't flow. Mm. It's for your own good. So you have to also go and apologize. Yes. If, <laughs> if there are several times I've apologized when I don't really know what you've done. What I've done <laughs> Because oh, I want my son. <laughs> he doesn't know he's that wrong. I have to. But you are angry over nothing. <laughs> Sometimes you are angry over. You don't. You are angry over so many things, things that you can't even yeah. pinpoint what exactly it is. You, you get and when he mm-hmm. asks, you can't tell him I'm this angry over this or that. You are just angry over everything. And when so, you talk, you feel like ah, maybe he, he maybe to him you have sorted that issue long you ago, know, and you are still angry it's, about it's it. It's a lot of things. Wow. See? So the the word of God has to be lived out, mm. practicalized, involved. I mean, from the beginning, we look as if it's so much work, but at a point you realize that no, we've had something like this. I applied the word of God. We were open. Mm. Another thing is that you have to be open and real about the word of God, mm. instead of it making you look like some abstract or some uh, alien principle that doesn't apply to you. So. When it comes to, I've been talking about forgiveness, I've been mm-hmm. talking about offense. You have to get to the point where you have to go against your emotions, your selfish emotions. Yeah. That want to, I want to do this lady some so she'll feel like, Charlie, <laughs> what she did to me, I'm really hurt. Mm-hmm. Or what this man did to me, I'll show him mm. that, Charlie, I'm, so let me do. You are not living scripture. So you, wow. But, and it's natural to feel like that. Mm-hmm. It's natural. Yeah. But we have to say that this is what the word of God is saying. So when I'm even angry at her, I feel like Charlie, let me mafia her small, like something. <laughs> you understand? So say you go pay them some. <laughs> you and you actually do it. No, of course you won't do it. You can't okay. do it. Mm-hmm. You think it. Yeah, your conscience yeah, will prick you. But your conscience will prick you. Don't do it. There are times where now you the word of God will just open to you. You're a mm. hypocrite. You see yourself. Yes, like, yes, you're yes, a hypocrite. Yes, yes, then yes. you have to repent. You said that you want to be like God. If if, if it is God, yes. do you think Christ will do this? Like yes. all those things. So yeah, let me come to you on the yes. issue of, of submission. A lot of us sometimes, let me say, quote and unquote, fight it. How do we um interpret submission in the in the word of God and not even as slavery? Because n- it's relative but from let me say the word of god perspective and being married to a man of god or even being a woman of god yourself and you still have your own career you have your own ministry you have your own mission you have your own purpose how do you submit all that under a husband okay and thank you Hmm. so um the fact that you were able to say i do to Hmm. him in itself is submission okay i mean um before you get married you should be ready or you should know that um you are going to answer mm. or do yes or yes or to someone okay so the fact that you said yes they they did ping pong ping pong <laughs> it's, it's submission in itself yeah, yeah and so immediately the marriage starts he's the head mm. no matter what that's what the bible says Mm. unless you are not a christian Mm. that's what the bible says Mm. whether you you have a better job than him Mm. whether you are older than him however whatever Mm -hmm. the bible um, expects us to submit and allow him to lead Mm. so he's the head of the house he calls the shots Mm. i mean the 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 good thing about um marrying um, a christian is the fact that he submitted to god first so yeah. it makes it easier. easier it makes the decisions you know flowing you are praying he's praying so he brings up something and sometimes it is in sync with what you feel or what you think or what god has already you know told you mm-hmm. about so it doesn't bring so much of conviction i mean there are times where there are divergent views mm-hmm. that we have to battle through but you know most of the times it flows I mean god has laid on his heart to give a certain seed mm. i mean there are times where he mentions the amount and that is exactly what is in my mind wow. or that's exactly what god has laid on my heart wow. and i'm like oh, well it's the same thing let it go there are times where okay so this church building project this and that and i'm like let it go so um 
when you, you you are also obeying the word of god it makes the submission a little easier yeah. there are times we battle it yeah. we are human beings yeah that one there is nothing we can do yeah. about we mm. battle it he will say something chale your your <laughs> woman ego or yeah. pride yes. doesn't want to let go yeah. but um some way somehow god has a way of taming us mm. you fight and fight and fight mm. and at the end of the day one party has That's to win yeah. and um i'll say it again Mar marrying a christian man who is submitted to god, god yeah. sometimes he can even lay down his own and then pick up yep. your own wow that's the beauty of it wow. not like yours is better than his mm. but probably sometimes to let peace reign mm. or god or will talk to him on your in, behalf in, in his way in mm -hmm. his prayer room god just tells him to just accept your mine. own then we go mm. so mm. it's it's a marriage is a, a union of compromise mm that he says is a union of um to, to forgive us yeah. it's also a union of compromise so mm. we compromise here and there mm. and then come to mm. a perfect agreement yeah let, let's look at career you know i think that, that has been one of the career and finances has one of the major causes of people breaking up their marriages because probably before you got married um you didn't expect your spouse to go that far a few weeks ago i i kept on my status that there are some questions you should ask that uh, before before you get ask your spouse how far do you want to go in your career perspective so if, if you are coming to me i tell you that i want to go as far as being the president of ghana can you handle being a husband to a woman of that caliber can you handle being a husband to a woman say give the auntie sarah jakes robert oprah winfrey so do you think that sometimes because we do not discuss our career goals or future goals or people just feel normal and don't even think god can bless them to a certain point and you ask for the blessings of god your wife can get a singing gig to come to us and sing for let me say uh, uh, pastor paula white or something and she's coming back with some hundred thousand dollars automatically she will have more money than you <laughs> how are you going to handle that like do, do, do you think that both of you understood um how far you could go and if she comes home one day with one million dollars your money you go wouldn't say that no push everything into my account i'm the head of the family have do you think it's one conversation you had or how are you dealing with those things and how other couples can also deal with it okay i was coming to you on that yes because most of times it's easy and common and normal if the man is the one making the one million dollars two million dollars gigs it seems that he is the head and takes care of the woman but it becomes so tough mm. when your woman actually has more money than you mm. even if you are not thinking about it somebody mm. even if your wife wants to disagree with you like on a normal disagreement mm. or you get home she gets and she says it's like oh please can you pass me this bottle of water she, then you now say hey, hey now you have money more than me so you want to be sending me around the house but these are just normal public disagreements a husband and wife could have so from the man perspective um of course that, that thing is is a it's a very dicey thing mm. and it's more it's a mental thing as well okay because uh, when um the woman was a place as a support Mm. as a help to the man and act as that and the man doesn't feel threatened yeah in terms of like um, being competed for the headship uh i don't think it's a problem mm. um i've said that uh, you know she more or less helped me from the beginning of our relationship mm. and even when let me just say this at a point she was making she was making more money than I was. Mm. You understand? Yes, but it, it didn't mean that I wasn't playing my role mm. as, a, as a man of the house. Mm. I still had to make play my role as a man of the mm. house and take care of the family. Mm. You understand? Uh -huh. As for a woman's money, um, it's a woman's money. It, 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 it's her <laughs> money. Do you also believe yeah. you know it's a woman's money is her money. No, I mean, you see. But your money is your your singular the, the, money. The rule of a man mm. from from the creation of God, mm. 
from Adam and Eve and down the line, the man is to take up the house. Mm. You understand? We can't reverse it. When yeah. you reverse it, there will be chaos. That's true. You, you get it, yes. So the point is that the man remains the leader of the mm. house. And if the woman makes more money than the man, mm. the man shouldn't shirk his responsibility mm. for the woman to do. Okay, so mm. because the woman makes more money than you, you don't pay the bills in the house. Yeah. It will be a problem. You even tell her 50 50. <laughs> you, you get it. it. If you can't afford it, it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You understand? Her role is to help. You, you, you understand? But when, when you, can, you can help and you help and the man still performs his role, that's, it works perfectly. Mm. And they're submissive. Mm -hmm. I think the problem comes when the women are not submissive. At a point, they now feel like, okay, I'm better than you. Now I'm in charge. Because what I does have submission money. mean to you as a man? What is, when, when you say a woman should submit to you, what, what, what do you mean? What do you want them to do? You see, um, two of the things that a man want from a woman is submission respect. Okay. Explain okay. that. We do, we, sometimes we don't understand. We don't understand. <laughs> of course. You see, it means that the, there is a case where the man is not playing his role as a head. So okay. it becomes a problem. Mm. The woman doesn't see that he's the leader. Mm. Uh -huh, but the woman has to see that you are the leader of the mm. house you are leading her towards a vision yeah you are you are building the family you are supporting the family mm. physically financially in, in prayer yeah so you are leading them that way you it doesn't look like you are not the leader there's yeah. no way she, she can't occupy that position that's true you are ahead of her you get it but when it now looks like um you are not playing your role mm. it's like she is now the one taking care of the family paying all she's the feeding bills, the children yeah. paying the bills prayer she's the one leading the prayer in the family like ah so if you have to go to church you have to let you yeah, young girl, sorry <laughs> ah, so you who are you in the house are you like you know you're not playing your role mm, mm. so at the point you the man will now feel like ah charlie this woman is it looks like she's competing me mm. uh -huh, but if as a man you play your role in the family there's no way a woman will feel like um, you won't feel that competition. She will know her place. And of course, you don't have to use force. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You don't have to use force like, okay, uh, I'll show you your place in this. I am there. No, you don't have to. If you are playing your role, I mean, your action will speak. You don't yeah. have to use your voice to say that I am the man of the yeah. house. You No. <laughs> uh -huh. Being a man of the house doesn't also mean that the woman's voice should not be heard. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So she can have more money than you. She can support you, but don't check your responsibility mm. as a man for the woman to do. Mm. Then you'll be losing your place mm. as a man of the house. Mm. Yeah. Losing your place. Now, she, he has spoken about respect and submission. Do you think most times we misunderstand these things as women? Do you think we don't respect the men? We are not sub not uh, from probably what we probably hear, one also from the will and the way of of god do you think that we have let modernization westernization um yeah what where we are now has affected our role as wives um yes i think so um you know the genesis talks about the original intent of god mm. concerning marriage mm. i mean the man being the provider mm. and um i i normally say in this modern world only the man's salary cannot sustain him. Mm. Mm. i mean you, you know the economy yeah. only the man's salary cannot sustain at home so it takes the two mm. for things to work um when the man is doing it alone sometimes they can okay. but it gets to a point where you would see that there is stress yeah and you the woman even becomes a nuisance mm. so i normally advise women who probably are not working mm. at the moment try and find something to do mm. at a point you might he's fine now but at a point where there is financial stress you become a nuisance mm. and so um and women too at a point where we become a little bit financial independent we become a little bit bossy mm. It's, it's, it's natural with women when women attain leadership positions when some women we, some always, women okay. some women sorry 
so it's, it's natural with some women let me say a lot of women mm. so um you get more money than your husband and then you want to now attain a certain position in the home call the shots make the decisions of course they can't be two heads someone says anything with two heads is a monster mm. there can't be two heads mm. in the house yeah. one has to be the head and so there will always be fights mm. in the house mm. so in as much as god is blessing us so i i i also want to say that um a secured man is mm. an asset mm. You know, there are men who even want their women to do better. Yeah. And he's one. Yeah. I, one of the day, I, I, I always say he's the one who is pushing me, actually. Mm. Mm. I always tell him that the school he doesn't want to, to go, <laughs> he wants me to go for him. Yeah. Where he actually probably doesn't want, want to, to go, go to, he yeah. wants me to go. Mm. So he's a secured man in himself. Mm -hmm. So when I am even doing better than him, mm. he's happier. Mm. So that's that in itself humbles me, wow. sort of. That in itself. Yeah. So there is no place for competition mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, because sometimes there are competition between couples. It, it, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm because i know my place he knows his place mm. he's playing his role as the head very well mm. and so the man is necessary that no matter what the woman ends even if the woman let's say a woman like you mm. very influential mm. you marry a man if the man is secured in himself there is no way he would compete with you or he will feel less of a man mm. no matter how probably you behave of course we are humans yeah. sometimes you'd want to flaunt your wings mm. a little mm. but he's secured in himself and wouldn't take it like you are being proud yeah. or you mm. are being full of yourself so um, a secured man in itself mm. is an asset okay a secured man in himself is an asset i like that word an asset so make sure that we, we all get married to assets <laughs> <laughs> now I, I i want to come back to you um Mr. Seval on this, on how, you know, you, you mentioned something about the woman, if the woman has to um, ask the children, let's pray, ask them to go to church and all that. It's like sometimes we see that as balance. The men sometimes only focus on the financial care for the family. and But the spiritual aspects, we hardly see that. And we actually see more of our mothers nurturing us mm. in Sunday school, nurturing hey, get up Sunday morning is our mothers who are coming in. You we hardly see our fathers did us in morning devotion. Do you think that the spiritual aspects of the growth of the family okay, how can we make it better? Maybe we don't have a lot of time now, but with fathers and upcoming fathers, what can we do better? in the spiritual development of our families um i think that uh, in, in christian homes or uh yes the the mothers help the fathers mm. to to play that role of course the man wouldn't be in the house uh, when the children return from school um, he may leave to work earlier than the mother and of course in our traditional homes the, the mothers take care of the children they are home so they'll spend more time. Mothers spend more time with children than the men. Mm. Uh -huh. So it's expected that um, the woman will have more influence in terms of uh, daily monitoring of Bible study yeah. and prayer and observing certain things, correcting certain things, molding things. Mm. In fact, mothers mold children more than the fathers. Uh, the fathers. Okay. Because they spend more time. You spend the, I mean, it's, let's be That's very practical. True. Yeah. Yes. So if your mother is not God-fearing, you you easily get spoiled because if your father is god fearing yet your mother is not and you're spending more time with the your woman mother, yeah she's still, she's the mm. one virtually going to mm. bring you up mm. uh -huh. so fathers play the role it's like a leadership role he gives the instruction yeah and then the woman has to carry implement it implement it yeah but then it doesn't mean that he sh the man should monitor okay so the man plays that strategic role mm. strategic leadership mm. role then the implementation of it the 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 mother sees to its implementation mm. but with the involvement of the man mm. 
Okay, so when we look from our patriarchs in the Bible, they have, they have always been involved in um, bringing up our, our, our children. Okay. I mean, their children and back to us as well. Mm. So um, we have to play that role, but it's cooperation between husband and then uh, the and wife. and wives. Okay. You know, bringing up the children it shouldn't be just their mothers. Okay. That. Okay. Yeah, we've spoken yeah. so much. I want to take our final words on everything we've spoken, what every couple should know, what every young couple should know, and what we can do better to, to sustain our marriages. Let me start with you. Um, he said something earlier, and I'll repeat it. Um, if we are Christians, I mean, it makes it easy. Mm -hmm. um, we can be Christians outside and not Christians in our mm -hmm. home. I mean, most of the times when I am off, that's what he reminds me of. Yeah. I mean, we can be hypocrites. So when we are having issues, he comes and he tells me, um, we, we can't continue like this. We can't be hypocrites. Yeah. What is the word of God saying yeah. about this? Yeah. I mean, you are a Christian. You have decided to live yeah. a godly life. Yeah. So the word of God is what molds you. Mm. So at the end of the day, if we live as Christians, most of the things... It would be easy yeah honestly yeah. it would be easy if we leave as christians most things would be easy your final words um i don't know if <laughs> <laughs> what i'll say as my final words but um i just want to to say that um let's let's all play each other's role um as uh, husband and wives and as family um mm -hmm. members uh when we play our roles at as uh, husband and wife as the bible says love our wives as Christ loved the church, it's a sacrifice. So mm. um, we don't have to be selfish in our love. Let's give it out selflessly, mm. as Christ gave to the church. Mm -hmm. And I think husbands will love our wives mm. and enjoy our marriages. Okay. Yeah. So in this season of love, love your wives and enjoy your marriages. Thank you so much for coming. It's such a great honor to have you on the show. I've been speaking with Mr. and Mrs. Sevo. We've been looking at how we can build healthy marriages and in this month of love i just want to encourage all of you to show love to everyone around you especially your spouse and make sure that whatever grudges you have with your spouse you mend them let us sustain our marriages and put the devil to shame thanks so much for watching amatha inspire see you same time next week